And welcome again to the big match. Another great ration of goals and excitement coming your way in the next hour as we bring you action from these three games. Our main one is Chelsea against Wolves, so vital in the second division, and one that you'll have to sit with to the very end. Don't miss it. Joining us from that game, and an exciting one it is, Steve Finiston of Chelsea. He's our studio guest. And we back that up with two games from the first division. The goals from Leeds United against Aston Villa, and the thrills and goals from Liverpool's match against Queen's Park Rangers. But first, it's to Stamford Bridge, where Chelsea, the second division leaders, faced one of their biggest tests so far against fourth-place Wolverhampton Wanderers. Incidentally, the toss-up for this game was made some 20 minutes before the start to give certain players the chance to decide on their studs. That's how bad the conditions were. But here are the two teams. Uh, Chelsea, first of all, an unchanged side, with Benetti in goal, Locke, Wicks, Hay and Graham Wilkins, Britton, Stanley and Lewington, Ray Wilkins, Finiston and Swain, with a substitute, Harris. And here indeed in his working clothes is our studio guest today, Steve Finiston. Fifteen goals so far this season. As for Wolves, they are also unchanged. Without stalwarts Mike Bailey and Willie Carr, uh, Pierce in goal, Palmer, Monroe, McCall and Parkin, uh, Patching, Daly and Gould, Richards, Sunderland and Hibbett, and Farley is their substitute. And among the goals for Wolves again now, John Richards, five in the last two games. And in the 36,000 crowd, the U.S. Secretary of State, Dr. Henry Kissinger. On the left there, Brian Mears and Mrs. Mears, the Chelsea chairman and his wife. And in behind them, our Foreign Secretary, Anthony Crossley. So Ron Crabb, the referee from Exeter, gets this game underway. Chelsea attacking the goal to our left in the all strip of blue with white stockings. Wolves in their famous old gold and black shorts. Gary Locke making a good quick run. Finiston is there, but a little too high for him. A good quick break that by Chelsea, defending an unbeaten home record here against a Wolves side that have moved up to fourth in the table. A second division match of considerable significance and not very easy for them on this side of the field, as you've probably already seen. The side that's been under the shadow of this enormous stand on this side of the field. And an offside against John Richards. In fact, both goalkeepers well guarded against the elements. Peter Bonetti with tracksuit bottoms on, and indeed a tracksuit top, and Gary Pierce also with uh, tracksuit bottoms. <laughs> Swain to Wilkins, played again for Locke. Finiston's got into the middle. And it won't come to him because Frank Munro is there. Daly, hustled into an error, Finiston, hit the post. Oh my goodness, that was so close for Chelsea. Disarray in that Wolves defence and Finiston nearly caught them out. Enormous stroke of luck for Wolves as that ball hit the post. And cannoned away for the corner. Well, that's got the crowd going. Tremendous atmosphere at Stamford Bridge. And Ian Britton with this corner now for Chelsea. Swain coming to him. Britton with time to get a good cross in. And it was Alan Sunderland who got up there. Wilkins trying to knock it back in again with his head. Wicks. Now we'll... Uh, <laughs> He really couldn't get up steam, uh, Ian Britton, the number seven, to uh, save that pass. Well, I think Dr. Henry Kissinger, the guest here today, must be quite impressed with the way this game has gone so far. A lot of good movement in it. Dr. Kissinger much more interested at the moment in a fight that's going on in the crowd on this side of the field and I suppose as a mediator he might well feel that he could do something about it. Through the middle, a nice little 
touch off. And Richards was through there, whacking it past Bonetti. Wolves going into the lead. Chelsea nil, Wolves won. John Richards' sixth goal of the season, having scored five in the previous two. And that is 17 minutes gone. Guest at Stamford Bridge, thought of that bit of action. Back to Kissing. Well, it's a great test of Chelsea's character now. And Rowe playing it back and playing it too short. Wilkins is in there. of score. John Richards for Wolves and now Ray Wilkins for Chelsea. Oh, mistake there by Gary Stanley and Wicks playing it back to Bonetti. Here's Graham Wilkins, brother of Ray. whose mistake it was, finding Richards. Sunderland very, very active up ahead of him. Patching coming up fast on the far side and into the side netting. A brilliant break, though, by Wolverhampton Wanderers. A sweeping passing movement. And Patching coming in, very nearly restoring the lead for Wolves. All winning it in the air. Graham Wilkins to Ian Britton. Lewington. Bit. A, bit, a bit low to the ground there, probably uh, best suited by these conditions. Ray Wilkins has to a bit of control, but Parkin will get there first. Gary Stanley with the throw for Chelsea. And Rowe having a tussle with Swain. And a throw given again to Chelsea. chipped that ball forward. Pierce, I think, fully expected the ball to bounce to him, and it stopped for a moment and very nearly allowed Finiston in. <laughs> Benetti right out there. Collided with Gould. No harm done. And the pack from Bobby Gould. Finister diving in there and finding Ian Britton. Mark in to Palmer. Wolves, in fact, looking fractionally the more composed side, playing a little better together, although Chelsea have had some uh, good rousing attacks. Not on that time. And it's there by Sunderland, goal given. No linesman flagging on the far side. As Richards played that ball through, Sunderland was on to it like a flash, past Bonetti, but that goal is disallowed. And a goal caught offside.
Graham Wilkins with the kick. Gary Stanley getting up well. Lewington up. Finiston hopeful of getting in there. Finiston with the shot. Oh, a marvellous save. Look at disappointment there on Finiston's face. A beautiful save there by Gary Pierce because as that ball was dropping, Finiston caught it superbly. Turned away by the Wolves keeper. So Ray Wilkins now with a the corner then for Chelsea. Curled in and a safe catch that time by Gary Pierce. Gould, stopped by Hay. Patching coming up fast. Steve Daly. Now can Hibbert readjust himself on this difficult surface on this side. Throw to Chelsea. John Richards getting underneath this one if he control it. Chelsea are in trouble. Well, he passed on that so quickly, Richards. Here's Palmer. Hibbit. Daly. Lewington after him. And tackling him well. But he'd have to do it again. And in the end, Wolves get a throw. Daly with it. Bit of space there for Sunderland. Over the head. And the goal by Bobby Gould. Oh, well, there were a few acrobatics on that byline. And as that came across, and it all began when Sunderland was unmarked, Gould also had plenty of time and space into the back of the net. Chelsea won, Wolves two. And Bobby Gould has scored. That's his ninth goal of the season. And certainly he's seen some good football, Dr Kissinger, and some goals to go with it. Chelsea haven't got that good a record against Wolves. They've beaten Wolves only once in their last seven visits to Stamford Bridge, and indeed when they last met two seasons ago, Wolves won both times. 1-0 here and 7-1 uh, at Molyneux. Well, Chelsea have got to do a lot of work now to uh, knock that jinx to one side. Here's Daly. John Richards having put Wolves ahead but within the space of 60 seconds Chelsea had drawn level through their number eight going in there Ray Wilkins only for Bobby Gould the number 10 for Wolves to restore the Wolverhampton Wanderers lead so the promise of a really exciting second half as well and a lot more to come on the big match today a half-time score at Stamford Bridge Chelsea won Wolverhampton Wanderers two we'll be right back So welcome back to Stamford Bridge. Wolves leading by two goals to one, now attacking the goal to our left. But Chelsea doing that bit of attacking at the moment as Finiston tries to make a bit of progress. Wolves, in fact, have scored eight goals in their last two games, four against Orient, four against Plymouth. Another couple here, quickly seeking to regain their first division place. But they lost last season. Here's Bobby Gould offside. 
think the marvellous away record rules when you consider it this season. They've lost only one away. That was at Hull. And they played with a lot of skill and teamwork today. Really carrying this battle to Chelsea. Here's Peter Bonetti. Sunderland. Hit it. Played on well there. It's not going to be easy for Steve Daly in that corner with Lewington following him in. Oh, Picks <laughs> coming his banjo and uh, what's it going to be? A corner or a goal kick? Well, what should we do with it? Let's put the corner flag back in. In fact, I think the ground might be so hard there that it snapped off. waving to say that he wants another flag there because he must have the flags in the corners he can always dispense with the ones on the center line and already the replacement is coming across brought by Bobby Gould handed to the referee now how is he going to get that into the hole I wonder there we are. A bit of strength and application they're underway again. Hear it. Straight to Benetti's arms. Ray Wilkins. Ray and Wilkins. Swain right in there, putting Monroe under pressure. Swain going in there, still the ball bobbing about, and a tremendous shot again by Gary Stanley. Away over that Wolves crossbar. It was Swain who was bobbing about in there, and it looked as though the chance might come his way. It was Stanley who was following up with great fury, and with a great shot that was wide of the mark. Proud are loyal. Here's Britain. Here's Locke. Britain again with Finiston in the middle. And Ray Wilkins. And a corner given. Top on Kenny Hibbert there. He tried to turn that ball away, but the uh, corner there was so frozen. But under pressure from Locke, he had to give away the corner. Now Britain's going to take it. Palmer's there. Kenny Swain in the background for Chelsea. Hit lower this time towards Stanley. And Wolves get it away again. This could be an interesting break. Daly has made a great run up there with Hibbert. And Gould is on the far side. Here's Daly. Turned inside for Patching. And now here's Hibbert again. A throw to Wolves. Broke out well there, 20 minutes to go. Wolves leading by two goals to one. Steve Daly with his throw for them. And picking up him it well. Oh, nearly a superb goal there for Wolves. They were so unlucky. They were so aware of what was on. Were Daly and Hibbert. Daly's throw, Hibbert released. Brilliant shot, just wide. Richards absolutely electric now, even on this uh, surface. Tremendous acceleration. And Sunderland is no slouch either. Here he is, number nine on the ball. Beaten that time by Hay. Knocked in first time, though. And Kenny Hibbert getting in there with a header. Richards with the goal. Number three for Wolves. And a Wolves player down injured. But that's the third goal for Wolves. The long cross coming in from the right. And knocked back across the face of the goal. Who 
John Richards to get in and beat Benetti from close range. So, uh, Kenny Hibbert, who got up so well at that uh, far post situation to nod it back, is the man who's injured, but he had a really big part in that goal, knocking it down for Richards. So the score now at Stamford Bridge, Chelsea 1, Wolves 3, and the second goal of the game for John Richards. What an incredible record uh, John Richards since he had that cartilage operation in September. Only his fourth appearance, and now his seventh goal. A couple last week against Plymouth. Three the week before against Orient, and two today against Chelsea. And chasing across to this side of the field now to try and intercept that Gary Lock. Pass to Britain. Well, in the uh, 17 minutes or so that are left, we're going to see what Chelsea are made of. Here's Britain. Little chip through this time for Lewington, and now for Finiston, bundled off the ball there. Wolves mashing well in defence, organising themselves and getting out of trouble. Sunderland now to Parkin. And Locke turning it in, back to Benetti. Looks as though Hibbert wants to come back on now. It took a knock on that right arm. My goodness, he got up well for that long cross, though. Swain. All good play there by Swain to find Gary Locke. Lewington looking to force his way through there to get a shot in. Oh, and he hit the post! Well, determination took him 90% of the way. As he struggled through to get a clear sighted goal, it was deflected wide of Gary Pierce, but against the post. When Chelsea badly needed a goal, Britain's there, that is a goal! Ian Britton! So Chelsea are back in the hunt. A corner floating in, and the smallest man on the Chelsea side gets up. Near post header, Chelsea's second goal. Chelsea two, Wolves three, and Ian Britton, the man with his fifth goal of the season, that puts Chelsea back in the hunt again. And quite a game for the distinguished guest and a smile that shows he's appreciating it. Well, now Chelsea with about 10 minutes left. But there's that man Richards again, but this time Bonetti difficult to keep his feet but he kept them well Swain and now we're going to have a real finish look up forward again there touched on by Lewington Turned inside, just a little too delicate there, and uh, Wolves trying to get themselves out of trouble delicately, and it's so difficult to judge the pace of these passes, and really it's old-fashioned wax out of defence, and I think that you probably want now, rather than to try to play your way out, because on this so difficult surface, passes just cannot be judged. Gary Locke, going a long way. Tried to curl one there, but uh, Gary Pierce always body behind that ball. Sammy Chan, the Wolves manager, doing his fair bit of shouting, took over. He was Bill McGarry's right-hand man, of course, now taken over the full job and really made a very good job of it. Hey. Lock. Hibbert. Skills in this wolf side. Gould. Had a 
quiet little spell, but now can he explode? Well, Daly's right in there, and Gary Locke had to come away. I think he wanted Benetti to come for that, and was maybe a little surprised that uh, Peter Benetti didn't. In the end, had to whack it away for a corner to Woods. Discussion as to what exactly was going on there. And now they must turn their attentions to Wolves as they come forward from this corner. If it again, we'll take it. Hatching making a run towards the near post. Uh, Gary Locke getting that away. Parkin turning it back once more. Ray Wilkins away that time. Here's Hibbert. Played on nicely for Parkin. Played on beautifully by Parkin and some good work there by Benetti. That was a lovely move by Wolves. And it's not away yet by any means. Five minutes to go. Ray Wilkins for Chelsea. The long ball forward and no trouble there for Wolves. Derek Parkin. Offside given against John Richards. And certainly Peter Benetti knows there's no time to be lost. Quickly out of his goal to get that ball. Hay with the kick. Hay again with the header. Hided down this time by Britain to Locke. Ray Wilkins trying to get Locke along that touchline again. Now can the fullback get his cross in? He's got a corner. So now there's going to be pressure in that Wolves penalty area. Jeff Palmer's won under pressure now. Gary Pierce is also under pressure, pointing out that Kenny Swain is on the goal line. There's the corner going in. And the big men come in. And rifled there and knocked away by a combination of Palmer and Pierce. And a shot there by Lewington. And Wolves in all sorts of trouble. And Pierce, I think. I suppose the force with which that ball came in at him, he might well have dislocated a finger. Maybe he put it out of joint and he's now back in again. He's got a few problems now as they come in again. Gary Stanley! Oh, and what a save! Finished in with a header! Goal given and Chelsea have equalised! Well, poor old Gary Pierce. A brilliant comeback by Chelsea. Nothing but despair for the poor fellow who's got a bad finger, Gary Pierce. As that corner came in, Gary Stanley got up superbly and nodded it in. A tremendous save by Gary Pierce. Only could push it into the air, and Finiston was there to get up and force it over the line. Chelsea three, Wolves three. A tremendous comeback by Chelsea that shows all the character in the world when ten minutes ago they looked to be dead and beat. In towards Sunderland, Hay is up there, Lewington back over his head, the ball heading it away, Hibbit planting it forward, John Richards offside. Some electrifying burst by him this afternoon. Referee again looks at his watch. Credit to the referee, but it's an afternoon when you don't really want to take a close-up of any players coming off because the whole afternoon has been a credit to both sides. A brilliant exhibition of good attacking football by two sides who clearly are going to have an enormous say in the promotion race in this second division. With Chelsea's goals coming from Ray Wilkins, the second one from Ian Britton, and the third one from uh, Steve Finiston with John Richards having scored two, and Bobby Gould won for Wolves. Chelsea, two goals down with ten minutes left. A brilliant comeback by them that says an enormous amount.
about their character. You can see Eddie McCready standing there and Gary Pierce going across to shake hands with Peter Benetti. It's been that sort of afternoon which has been a credit to both clubs. And a final scoreline then at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea 3, Wolves 3. Well, Dr Kissinger said afterwards how much he'd enjoyed the game and no wonder. And he congratulated Chelsea on their fight back. And the man who completed that fight back is our studio guest today, Steve Finiston. Some call him Jock because he's an Edinburgh lad, aren't you? Yes. Talking to Gary Stanley last night at Chelsea, he said, Super Finn. Well, it's been a fair season for you, 16 goals now. It has been, yeah. I've uh, been very lucky. I've scored a lot of goals in the last couple of minutes. It's uh, been great. He asked me to give him a mention, Gary Stanley. Did he? And well, Ray, Ray Lewington as well, right? Well, so Gary Stanley's got two already. So <laughs> should we go through the whole team or not? No, no. just Gary and Ray. <laughs> Conditions were pretty terrible yesterday, weren't they? Yeah, they were. One side of the pitch uh, nearest the changing room was, was boggy, but the other side was brick hard. So yes. it, was, it was amazing. You run across a pitch one minute, you couldn't pull your legs out of the mud, the other minute you were yes. flying about. But as I said, it was, it was on the commentary, it, it was a credit for both sides, really. They played so well. What did you think of Wolves, first of all? I thought they were a very good team, Wolves. Very good attacking team. Uh, even when they were 3-1 up, they didn't sit, sit back and protect that, which probably helped us. Yes. Uh, I thought Richards and Sunderland looked very dangerous up front for them. Well, Richards got the first goal. Sunderland had one disallowed, which uh, we should look at now, because I think uh, Wolves felt that that was a hairline decision. But in fact, I think when we look at it, Steve, you'll see that the linesman on the far side made a really excellent decision. Uh, you can see him on the far side, the linesman, as the ball comes through, it's headed on here. Now watch the number nine. He's level with the last line of defenders there, without any doubt. And the linesman on the far side, you'll see just as the action moves on, he's now at the point of raising his flag. There he is. And Alan Sunderland's goal quite properly was disallowed. And Peter Bonetti, I think, there had no doubts yeah, about it either. Uh, the linesman had his flag up. Uh, yes, indeed. A couple of seconds before. Yes, indeed. But the comeback again, I think, showed so much of the character of Chelsea. You were talking about your goal coming late in the game. But, I mean, ten minutes from the end, you must have felt that you were dead and gone. Yeah, I thought we were, actually, because we weren't playing very well. Uh, but Ian Britton scored, and then the crowd were terrific. I was going to say, the crowd never thought you were dead and buried. No, they didn't. Uh, they've been really great this season, especially at away matches, the, the noise they make. And it's not just the shed, it's the people in the stands as well seem to be yeah. cheering us on. Great feeling. Yeah, it is. What about your goal? Well, I, th I think I handballed it, actually. Do you really? Yes. Blow me. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> Corner came curling in. In fact, the goalkeeper Gary Pierce had just been injured and had no right to make a save from Gary Stanley's header. Like no, that. It was a super it was a great off the crossbar. Now, do you reckon you might have handled it? Well, I headed it first and uh, my arm was out and I think it hit my arm on the way in. Yeah, but which is it might have been, wasn't it? It would have gone in anyway. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll take it away from you. No. But in fact, you, we, we might get a better chance to have a look at that from behind the goal, Steve. Uh, uh, this one coming up now. Uh, the lights are pretty bad at Chelsea. They're in the process, as you know, of, of changing them over. And they weren't up to their usual qualities. But uh, I think they are very dramatic pictures. A tremendous was a save great, here. Great header, I think. Very strange. It was, wasn't it? And a very, very good save by Gary Pierce. Now, do you handle this as it comes in? Let's see if we can... Uh, in the gloom there, and we apologise for well, this. Well, I had it first. I don't yeah. think he could have disallowed it. We'll give it to you. Good. <laughs> a lot of people say that uh, maybe you haven't got the experience overall in the Chelsea side uh, to withstand the bad times should they come. Do you think that's uh, a fair comment? Well, we've, we've got a couple of experienced players in David Tay and Peter Bonetti, but the enthusiasm of the team, I think that, that makes up for a, a lot. Mm. And We've not really had a bad spell yet, which all teams have. And I don't think it would take as long to get out of one anyway. So just, just the last few seconds before we go, you were telling me that you've got a bet with Teddy Maybank, who was our guest on the studio yeah. in, uh, last week. He's at Fulham now, on who scores the most goals this season. Yeah. How does it stand at the moment? Well, Ted's got 13, I think, 11 for Chelsea Reserves and 2 for Fulham. And I've got 16. So. What's the, bet? Didn't score what, what's the bet? Is there a lot of money involved? Well, it's not a thousand pound anyway. <laughs> no, it's only a small bet. Hope you both go on getting a lot of goals. And Steve, well done yesterday and thank you for coming in today. Thanks. Thanks thank very you. much, Brian.
Well, our second match today brings us the goals from the first division clash between Leeds United and fast-rising Aston Villa. The Yorkshire cameras were at Ellen Road, Leeds. The commentators, Martin Tyler, and Leeds are in the white strip. Gray, away from the centre. Not really feeling the Queen there. from Byron Stevenson but it was enough for the referee to give the free kick but we'll have to wait while the streamers are taken off the playing area John Kidman lending a hand in for Andy Gray to jump which he does so well little up to and there's Gray and Andy Gray does it yet again Six minutes gone, and it was Gray who played a part in making it, and Andy Gray who finished it off. John Gidman taking the free kick, Andy Gray getting a little touch that sent it across to the back of the goal, Brian Little getting up well too, and it was Gray who was unmarked as it came across again, tucking it past David Harvey. Eddie Gray. In for Jordan to knock it down for McNiven. The one-two works again for Leeds. Eddie Gray, an astute ball with the outside of the left foot, knocked down by Jordan and David McNiven in onto the knockdown and really wrapping it into the back of the net. Now Phillips as Leeds defenders come out. Knocked in again, Andy Gray. Well, there was hesitancy there. And you can't hesitate with Andy Gray about. Leeds were pushing out, but they didn't push out quick enough because there was space. Andy Gray got into it, onside quite clearly, and tucking it away with that dangerous head of his. Phillips. Alex Crockley. Oh, quite a lot of room in the middle of the field this afternoon. Dean and Cropley gets it on. Now Alex Cropley, can he keep his foot? He does! Alex Cropley makes it 3-1. Well, he's been an impressive performer this afternoon. He started it from deep. He carried it on. He got the ball back again. And then threatening to lose his balance as Cherry came in, just tucked it under David Harvey. And a 3-1 win then for Aston Villa. But just a quick look at your letters now, and my eye caught this one from Russell Knapton. I hope I've got the surname right, Russell, but I couldn't read it all that well. Of Kendall's Farm, Milton on Stour, Gillingham, because I think that's how they pronounce it down there in Dorset. Russell, obviously a Southampton fan. He says, please could you show the wonderful moments of Southampton in the Cup last season, uh, the goal that won the match at Wembley. Also, could we see Mike Shannon in the bath after the semi-final against Crystal Palace? This would be a super surprise for our mum. Well, Mum, here we go. Uh, and I spoke to Mick and to Peter Osgood about the fear element of the game at this level. I, d I don't think there's any fear once the game gets started, Ryan, but I think the week before, you know, I think that everyone was edgy, you know, and, and Mel was, uh, you know, Mel, Malcolm Allison was, was very confident, but I think it's all a front. I don't think, I think basically he had that fear, you know, deep down that he was frightened of, of getting beat, which I did, you know, I'll be honest with you, and, you know, it, you don't know it's the unknown, and it slaughters you, honest, it, it burns at you, and I think that's, a, that's the only, that's what I would mean by the unknown, you know? Malcolm was right, it's a fun game. <laughs> For you now. Oh, magic. Oh, you enjoyed it, didn't you? It is, mate. <laughs> it's a fun game now. Oh, yeah, it's not finished yet, Brian. You know, the thing is now you've got there's no point in getting to the Wembley and bloody losing. We've got to get there. We've got to win it now. That's the, you know, I mean, all right, it's all right celebrating now. We should probably celebrate for another day or so. And, uh, but the thing is now we've got to win the bloody thing. Shannon. Nice touch again. Carry on. Oh, look at this. Bobby Stokes. Hit well. Oh, he's there. Stokes has put Southampton in the lead. Which brings me to this Pat Jennings jersey. The prize for a viewer who spotted how many of the principal players who appear in our opening titles have since changed their club. Well, we spotted six of them, and these are the ones. Norman Hunter, who's up there, of course, now left for Bristol City from Leeds United. Next, we have Barry Lloyd, who's gone from Fulham to Hereford.
Coming up next, we have Pat Howard on the right there from Newcastle to Arsenal. Next man, Peter Taylor, of course, from Crystal Palace to Tottenham Hotspur. We also have the number five in the striped shirt there, Glenn Keeley, who's gone from Newcastle to Blackburn, and Terry Mancini, who's gone from Arsenal to Aldershot. And the first correct answer out of the bag came from Philip Wilson of 59 Cold Harbour Lane, Kemsley, near Sittingbourne in Kent. Philip, the shirt is yours. Our final match today, what a thriller. Again with a sting in the tail, as Liverpool take on Queen's Park Rangers at Anfield. While Liverpool lost the lead in the first division, as you know, to Ipswich in midweek, but with the Ipswich match abandoned at Newcastle at half-time yesterday because of frost, it really was the chance for Liverpool to leapfrog back to the top. The pictures at a misty Liverpool come from Granada Television. The commentator is Gerald Sinstat with Liverpool in the all-dark strip. Nelson's header, Bowles, Givens, on his chest and round Neil. Chip inside for Easter, 1-0. Beautifully made, very simple. The first time that Don Givens has effectively been in the game, his chest takes him round Neil. The cross was perfection, and the header from Easto was simplicity itself. Keegan with a bit of space. Callaghan. Callaghan going on. Thought about the shot. Looked instead for Highway. Running at Clement. Finding room for the cross, but Clement got back and blocked it for a corner. Steve Highway will take it. Edge of the picture there was Joey Jones, but Highway goes for the one into the middle, and Keegan jumps, and it's in or out. Just a fingertip by Phil Parks. I thought he pushed it against the inside netting, but somehow it was smuggled away. Highway's corner, an enormous jump from Kevin Keegan, and in the end, just fingertips by Parks. So the excitement mounts again. Aimed towards Clement, but headed down by Jones to Highway. Inside to Kennedy. Kennedy on the left foot this time. Can Toshak turn? He got it back from McDermott. Toshak following it in. And Neil back on the post. Toshak! Toshak through the middle, Keegan and McDermott going to join him, but Highway now. Allowed to go on by the referee, playing the advantage, and here's McDermott, and the shot has hit the post! But what a good illustration of how to play the advantage role. Highway undoubtedly fouled there, he retained possession, the referee let him go, and when it came to McDermott, the good application of the advantage law came within an inch or so of a goal. Out to Jones. Good work at finding themselves away. Onto the attack again once more by Liverpool. An obstruction on Keegan, which will give Liverpool a free kick just about on the edge of the penalty area. 1-1 with eight minutes to go. The tension beginning to show on both sides. You can feel it a bit around. Johnson. Kennedy chasing through. And put out for a corner by Kelly. Highway. Placing the ball for the corner. Callaghan is the player with him. 